live stream number two. Today, I'm so excited to be joining you and working with you on a couple of different things here. Uh, last week, we had our first episode. I think I still got that delay thing that I got to work out. I'm working on our powered stream by StreamYard here. This is our first time coming back and doing this official episode with somebody other than Ecamm Live. So I'm really excited to keep testing them out for this next month and make that happen. But if you are new here, I wanna thank you so much for coming out. Local Worship Project, what we're trying to do here is train, equip, and unite people, uh, local worship leaders with each other. And that includes you helping train each other, you helping equip each other, and, um, and also leading each other in worship. Uh, but one of the things we're doing here in this live stream is just getting us to this, this um, place where we can start helping each other with a consistent mold of training, equipping, and uniting. So thank you for coming in. If you're new, consider subscribing now and being a part of this community. If you are coming back from before, thank you so much for coming back be from before. I really appreciate having you on here, and I want to be of good value to you in the uh, in the coming future here and in today's episode. On the episode today, we're going to be talking about the Nashville number system. We're going to be talking about a little Samsung T5 portable SSD solid state drive that could really change your workflow. We're going to be talking about worship artistry and Jason Houtsma with an interview coming up with him and also letting you know what's going on with the local worship project. So without anything else going on, let's get right into it. All right. Again, thank you for coming. If you're a subscriber, thank you for coming back. If you are not a subscriber, consider subscribing by the end of this episode and liking this to share this on YouTube. That is what shares it on YouTube. Um, I want to let you know that over the next few weeks, I want to start doing some shout outs from our community. And there are a lot of you who have subscribed here that I just don't know yet. And so I'm going to try to reach out to you and just let us know who each other are a little bit. And so just be looking out for that. I'm going to stalk you a little bit, try to figure out who you are and uh, reach out to you and see if there's anything that you want to share with the community as a welcome for next week, the week after next couple months, I'm going to be really working on getting you guys done so that we can get everybody officially welcomed into the project. Um, I also want to make sure that, that you know that uh, from our community, we do have one request that was mentioned. So Kayla Cutshaw, she had an episode on the seven day worship series that's in the playlists of this YouTube channel. Uh, she was, I think, episode number three in there. She has been asking for prayer on Facebook right now. Um, she had a biopsy done this last week and she's waiting on the results. And so she needs prayer for that. If you guys can just lift her up in your prayers today, that would be amazing. Um, and just, you know, give her a shout out, Kate, uh, Kayla Cutshaw. She lives in California. Great interview. Check her out when you're done with this. Um, she's really, really great gal. We had terrible audio connection with her when, when we did the podcast episode. And so I'm going to try to get her on again at some point in the future, but, but great heart great girl. And I um, want to thank her for coming on the show and let her know that we're going to be praying for her in our community. Um, so what's coming up? What's coming up in the local worship project? Uh, we talked last week about kind of our workflow for this live stream. And this is where we're going to talk about what's in the can. So what is coming up on the podcast? We have an episode coming up with Jason Houtsma from worshipartistry.com. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with worshipartistry.com, it's, it's quite the place to be. Jason Houtsma has this, uh, this really cool way of breaking down songs into uh, an easily digestible system and package. And I'm going to share with you real quick what that, that looks like here. Um, but essentially, when, when I talk with Jason, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about his actual uh, ministry here with worshipartistry.com. But uh, we're also going to talk about a few other things with leadership. It's a really great episode. We're going to be talking with him in September. Um, we've already talked with him, but we're going to be launching that September 21st, I believe, is going to be the launch date. It's the third week of September. It's either going to be then or the 14th. So be ready for that episode to come out. But this is Worship Artistry. I wanted to just kind of show you real quick what, what this is so you can kind of get a, a vibe for it, check him out a little bit. But essentially what it is, is he's broken down into five parts, five um, musical parts, the, uh, the different songs in the, the bigger, you know, 
um, song lists out there right now. So guitar, bass, drums, keyboard, and now he is introducing vocals, uh, which is going to be the melody and then a three-part harmony is what he said on that, which is super cool. So I've actually never gone to the vocals yet. Uh, you log in, you're able to kind of check out songs, search them around. But if, for instance, we went to Blessed Be Your Name, what you get are these five different options, three, four, five, that you're able to choose from. So if I go to guitar, for instance, um, he's going to break down uh, an introduction to what the song is. And if um, you're looking at the electric guitar version, which is he's got his rhythm and usually he's got an electric lead guitar. He breaks down tone, sounds, and then it goes into parts. So like a verse, uh, there we go, verse, chorus, bridge, and they're quick videos, like a minute and a half. Great resource for your team. Check him out, Jason Houseman. that's him right there. Uh, he was such a blast to talk to, and, and we'll have that podcast up for you soon. Um, so I wanna thank him for going on that with us. Um, but let's keep going here. So that's one thing that's coming up on the uh, on the local worship project. Another thing that's happening is our audio podcast is going to be launching here. It's going to be launching the second week, second Monday of of September. So that's going to be the 14th when that launches. I'm so stoked about this. I got a guy helping me get this audio done. He's been working on it for a few weeks now, and he's just crushing it. So on the 14th, uh, we will have the first official podcast released on iTunes, Spotify. Um, things like that. So I am, I'm stoked to see that happen and excited for you guys to, to have another way of being able to listen to things. So we've got that coming up down the pike. Got Jason Houtsma, Worship Artistry podcast is being released on audio. Our website will be fully released by September 18th. Uh, that means we're going to have that interactive stuff. I kind of showed you last week, look at the live episode if you haven't seen that. Um, but it's it's a really great opportunity for you to be able to see what's going on in our community and get free resources from them. And the last thing we have is a full interview and review, not interview, a full review coming up um, with our Rode Wireless Go. Last week on the live stream, we talked about the Rode Wireless Go very, very quickly. And we'll be doing that today with another product very quickly. But in this uh, actual review, we'll have a full on uh, what what was great about it, some things that I wish they would do, and um, and then who I would recommend it for. And that'll be coming out sometime in mid-September as well. I'm excited for that first review that will be released. So, whew, I mean, I think I've got, no, no, there it is. There's the cheers. All right. So we got some cheers. Use another piece of equipment that's weird and fun. Um, but anyways, we got that coming out as well. That is pretty much what's coming up down the pike in the local worship project. So be looking out for that interview with Jason, worship artistry, uh, super cool stuff there. Road Wireless Go, uh, full on review and the audio podcast being released. That's what's in the can for the local worship project. Now I want to get to the meat. OK, I want to get to the meat of today. We are going to talk about the Nashville number system. <laughs> And this is something that's been going on for a long time. I'm pulling up my keynote here. Um, for a long time, I've been using the Nashville number system and, uh, and really trying to get to the place where, where our team, our new team over here is able to use it as well. The Nashville number system has been used for hundreds of years. It's something that's gone back way before Nashville you know, was a thing. And, uh, and Nashville just kind of inherited it because they do a lot of studio stuff. It's a really quick system to use. But I want to talk with you about this. I use this in my worship teams the last two churches. It, it just it was great. And in this one, we're about to start using it over here. So hope my worship team listens to this episode as well. I'll be sharing the same thing with them. But what is the Nashville number system? The Nashville number system got this great little quote off of Wikipedia by Patrick Costello no clue who you are, Patrick, but thank you for this really concise definition for the Nashville number system. That's totally not legitimate, but, but did a good job. The Nashville number system is a trick that musicians use to figure out chord progressions on the fly. It is an easy tool to use if you understand how music works. I love that, that Patrick put that little last part in there. The word trick there, I like that he put that in there too. System 
or the number system is a trick. Um, and it's not to devalue that at all. My dad's actually a magician. So I, I grew up knowing that a trick is way more than what it looks like on the outward. And that's exactly what this, this word really means. It's something that, that looks really subtle and really, um, really, uh, small, right? It's a really compact thing, but there's a lot going on behind the scenes that it allows you to do. That's the trick that's going on with it. Um, but you have to understand how music works and that's going to go into right here. Fundamentals. What is the number system? I always compare it to math. Whenever I think about the number system and I think about music in general, I mean, we know that there is a mathematical equation to music. If you've done it ever, <laughs> if you studied anything about music, you know, there's math involved with it, right? There's one, one and a half steps. There's three steps. There's five steps. There's seven and a half steps. We know that music is basically math. Um, but when you come to understand the fundamentals of math, it's kind of like understanding the fundamentals of the chord structure chart, right? And this is something that you've probably seen as somebody who's grown up playing music or somebody who's trying to learn, or if you've gone to college and you've learned it, this is very familiar to you. If it's not familiar to you, let me introduce you to a basic chord chart here that will change your life. Um, this chart is basically the equivalent to understanding plus, minus, divide, um, multiplication, all that stuff when it comes to math. This is your fundamental base. This is what you need to get in order to really accomplish a good musicianship in any band type setting. Because you're given a chord chart and you need to know how to read that chord chart. You need to know how chords relate to each other. And so basically what this tells us when we read it is that um, on the left, you have the bold A through G, uh, top through bottom, and those are your, your scales. And then um, on each of those lines going from top to bottom, that's your, your full scale breakdown. Uh, so like in the key of A, for instance, your first chord in the key of A is A major, then B minor, then C sharp minor, then D major, E major, F sharp minor, G sharp, diminished. And that's how the scale works. So memorizing how the scale and the chord structure work in the scale of A is really key to learning your fundamentals in worship. All right. So number system starts with fundamentals. And that's why I love that quote that said, you, you for those who know music, right? Let me go back to it real quick. Yeah, yeah. If you understand how music works, okay, this is how music works. <laughs> the chord chart is how music works. We can understand this. You got to learn this. All right. The next thing that you do is you look at your chord chart, right? So I want to show us this fundamental chord chart. We've all seen these before. We know what this is. D is the first uh, chord there on the top, E minor seven, G two, A, and then you keep going from there. It's your basic fundamental chord chart. All right, let's keep moving. Number system. What is the number system? We start getting into it now. Variables are the way that I think of numbers when it comes to easily understanding how it works in music. All right. So if, if I learn my fundamentals in math, my how to multiply, how to divide all that stuff, and then somebody throws this at me, this algebraic kind of chart here, um, this will throw me for a loop until I learn how the system works, right? And we all know that, that with math and with algebra, you have this, this variable which is X or Y or whatever, right? What I loved about algebra growing up is you can take the formula and you can come up with the answer that if like you're given the answer, you can solve it almost any way you want. It's so flexible because of those variables that you're able to use when it comes to algebra. I love algebra because of that. I'm terrible at it now, but I loved algebra growing up and scared a couple of my teachers thinking that I was weird because I would write out pages of problem solving stuff when it only took two steps to solve the problem. But that's where I think of the number system because the number system, all you're doing is you're taking like on this chart here, you got one, two, minor, three, minor, four, five, six, minor, seven diminished and one, right? What you see here is they become your variable. They become like X or like Y. And on the left side, you see our keys C through B. All right. And the same way the chart was written before left to right, that's your scale. That's your chord scale progression there. And what you see is those numbers take the place of anything, any scale. 
in those boxes, in those lines, those brackets there. So in the key of C, one is C, that's your first chord. Two minor is D minor, three minor is E minor, four is F, five is G, and so on. In the key of B at the very bottom, one is B major, two is C sharp minor, three is D sharp minor, four is four is uh, E major, and so on. We just keep going from there. And so when you use a number chart, we go back to our all glory be to Christ in the key of D, it's got this fundamental chord structure to it. If I throw the number chart up next to it, what it has are all those variable numbers. It's whatever I want it to be as far as which scale I choose. So this could be in the scale of D. It could also be in the scale of B, right? And we have to learn this. This isn't something you can do overnight with your team. This is something that takes weeks of intentional work and just asking for one song at a time and trying to help coach and lead through this. And then it also might be helpful to have your chart, right? To have this little guy there to where at the top, you see the Roman numeral numbers. It's the same thing. But you still get your major and minor chord breakdown and you still get your scale breakdown. So things like this really help. So if I tell my team and I have a chart for them, I'm going to make a, a better chart on um, our website when we launch that. I'll give it to you as a free resource um, that will have more of like the A sharp, A flat and all that stuff. And hopefully a better design to where it's really easy to dial in one at a time and not look at the whole thing. But anyways, you can still see the breakdown with this. Like if I'm looking at the number one, I've got in the key of A, if we want to do that, it's an A major chord. If two minor seven would become B minor seven, four would become D major, five would become E major, and so on. If I wanted to break it down in the key of G all the way at the bottom of that chart, one would be G, two minor seven would be A minor seven, four would be C major, five would be D major, and so on. So it really just becomes a variable that we use. And that is what the number system is in a nutshell. This is like super fast, just keep up. You know, if you have more questions about the number system, type number system in the chat and I will reach out to you and we will talk about the number system. So the next thing I want to talk about is why the Nashville number system. Um, that's cool. It's good that we can have variables. Sounds complex. Why would we go to that? I'm going to give you a little quote here from Neil Matthews Jr. from the Jordan Airs. You guys heard of the Jordan Airs? Uh, old group with uh, Elvis Presley, can't stop falling in love with you, that type of stuff. I bring them up because, well, one, the quote's just so great, but second, because um, they lived in a time where this flexibility, it was super key, but people were also very well learned when it came to music. <laughs> and so having people go who are very well learned with music and play something like this number system, just to me enhances the, the validation of how it's a step in the um, in the progression of I'm learning more and not a step backwards. Like I've heard from a lot of people who I've tried to teach this to uh, who are taught the number system or who taught the fundamentals of music and then say that's a step backwards to use numbers. Um, I would very strongly push against that. It is a step forwards because you're learning how to unlock the potential of the fundamentals um, in the future with less information. That's hard to do. So anyways, this quote, the Nashville numbering system provided us with a shorthand that we needed so that we could depend on our ears rather than a written arrangement. Shorthand, again, taking fundamentals. If I had to multiply five, five times, five by five, five times, I can either write that out five times or I can just write five times five parentheses with a squared, right? It's a shorthand. That's just what the number does. I don't have to give you five charts of music. I give you one shorthand. All right. So a shorthand that helps us depend on our ears rather than a written arrangement. We'll get to that in a little bit, how I love that. It took far less time to jot down chords. And once you had the chart written, it applied to any key. All right. Shorthand again, any key. The beauty of this system is that we don't have to read. We don't get locked into an arrangement that we may feel is not as good as one that we can improvise. Even mine, improvisation is something that we just do in music all the time. And we're gonna get to that here uh, in just a second as well. But I wanna give you two reasons to kill 
the chord chart and use numbers instead. The first is flexibility. Flexibility. When it comes to flexibility, I'm not talking about this guy. All right. Not looking at this dude who is sipping his coffee or rum or whatever he's got in there, um, either playing a game or doing some kind of work school with his leg above his head and rocking a man bun all at the same time. Um, not talking about that type of flexibility. When I'm talking about flexibility, I'm talking as a team. All right, guys, throw in the comments if you've ever have had, had a man bun below um, at this time, if you would. When I think of flexibility, I think about this. I think about a bluegrass circle. Have you guys ever been part of a bluegrass circle or a country circle? Uh, if you have, again, comments below, throw me that out. But this is a very unique environment for music. Um, if you've never been part of one, I don't even know how you really get involved. It's like you got to know somebody who knows somebody. Um, or they have them posted. They used to have them in flyers, like in the mail and stuff. But anyways, guys get together, gals get together who all play just different instruments. They sit in a circle. They play probably the same 50 songs that they've been learning over their entire life. <laughs> and they've learned the structure of these songs. They've learned the shorthand of these songs, whether they've used the shorthand with numbers or with chords or whatever, they've learned it well enough to where now they can just be flexible and move. And then what they do is they give each other times to solo, right? So they say, you take this one, you take that one. And, um, Hey, Bill, it's your turn to take it, take it on the guitar. Hey, Jan, it's your turn to take it on the mandolin or whatever it is. And they get an opportunity to, to show their flexibility as a huge group of people playing the same song. Um, because they learned the structure, they learned the shorthand of it, and they're able to just move forward. In this picture, you see just a few people with music because they're probably either new there um, or you know they just don't know that song yet, but there's very little of that going on in this group. It's so cool and inspiring. It reminds me of this worship quote. Tim Hughes says, Worship must be Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led a response to the Father about intimacy and service and always leading to transformation. All right, so when I read this, I love this quote, but what it tells us is right at the, right at the get here, worship must be Christ-centered and Holy Spirit-led. Okay, if something's going to be centered on Christ, I need to have my full focus on him which means I don't have my focus pulled from him to an arrangement that was written that I'm not familiar with, right? One, I'm not familiar with. Two, it's very complexly written so that I can't steal myself away and be able to look back and quickly grab it and then move away again. Um, so it doesn't have a shorthand to it um, if I need to be flexible in that way. And three, if I change a key, uh, they're, they're just dead in the tracks, dead in the water if it's a chord chart and not a number chart because they don't know how to get to the end result unless they transpose in their head. And so this idea of being Christ-centered, I want my team to be focused on Christ, and I want them to have another eye on the leader, being able to follow the leader, right? That's the goal as a worship leader for me. I want my team to be able to be set free to do that. And we'll talk about chemistry in a second, but that's part of the flexibility of it. And, um, and then for me as a leader, I want my attention on Christ for my crew in the back, my technical crew. I want their attention on Christ for the congregation. I want their attention on Christ and not on us. Um, and the more we can engage with each other, the more we become a family in that, like this circle that we see in bluegrass, people are being able to just enjoy each other. Even when they have the music, you see the dude up there in the top, uh, with his guitar and the little red thing in his pocket, he's still not looking at his music. He's looking at other people right? Because it's just there is like a safety, but he's really enjoying the time with the other people. So Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, a response to the Father. That means that we got to be flexible to respond. If the, the song needs to change during, we need to be flexible and let it change, not be locked into one chart. Transformation at the end there, always leading to transformation. This is something that not just with, with our hearts here, but also with with our ability to move. And if, if God says, go left, I go left. If God says, stop playing, I stop playing. If God says, 
Hey, I want you to play the chorus five times and just build intensity. I do that. And my team's going to follow me. That's this flexibility that's built in here. So flexibility is the first reason to kill the chord chart and use numbers. The second thing, second reason that I'm going to give you is team chemistry. And on this, I'm going to be done here with the number system, but I'm going to give you a kind of a geeky thing. I love star Wars. I love it. Love it. Love it. I've had four kids. And with these four kids, they're four and under right now, which is crazy, I know, but um, they actually like Clone Wars. And so I've doubled down on that. But let me show you a team that's very blurry in this image. We'll get another image there. A uh, team that is very blurry from Star Wars. And uh, they're actually called the Bad Batch because... They they came out of the they're they're clone troopers. I should explain that they are clone troopers, and with these clone troopers, they're all made exactly the same, right? That's the whole point. They're clones. Uh, the problem with these guys, where they came out, they were a bad batch. They didn't come out the same way. They were all unique. They all had different strengths and weaknesses and passions and all this stuff, and they actually became like the most elite force that that they had in in that era. Uh, in the war that was going on across the galaxy, because these guys knew how to work together so well. They pushed each other to the nth degree in all of their better skills. You got a sniper there. You got a guy on the left who's way more techie. You probably see that with his nerd glasses on. You got a guy in front who's like a bulldozer guy. And then you got their captain right next to him. But you got these guys with different skill sets. They learned how to work with each other, become flexible. When things changed, they were able to adapt. They were able to move together. Take that in stark contrast with this image of the stormtrooper that we know, right? We all know the stormtrooper. Come on, don't be embarrassed. We know the stormtroopers, but we know one thing about them for sure, other than their terrible shots. We do know that the stormtroopers were completely rigid from the way they walked to the way they ran to the way that they talked with each other, the way they followed orders the way that they did protocol, uh, when things changed, we know that they were completely, completely dialed in to what they were commanded to do. There's a chain of order. There's a sequence of events. There's a thing, I'm, a job I'm supposed to accomplish. And they were not flexible because they would be punished if they tried to be, right? They weren't creative in that way. Um, so I think of the Stormtrooper as, as a band who does an excellent job following the chord chart. Excellent job, right? These guys were the best of the best and they were like feared in the galaxy. I don't know why they couldn't shoot anybody if it was a hero, but they were still feared and they had a huge reputation for just law and order. That's what they were all about. Uh, in contrast with the, the team above who is, is known for their flexibility and their, their um, intuitiveness and their, um, their ability to transform when it came to the situation and make things happen when it was re required. And uh, there's a place for both. There's a place to be really good at the process and there's a place to be flexible. As a worship team, you need to have a little bit of both. Let me introduce you to a few bands you probably already know. We got the Beatles, got the Rolling Stones, you got this guy over here, Dave Matthews. Then we'll get into Christian stuff here. DC Talk, David Crowder Band. We got Passion Worship, Switchfoot, All Sons and Daughters. And we have Ren Collective Alternative, and now you, right? I'm just going to say one more thing here. The number system, There's uh, your team is going to do what you got to do, right? I'm not going to push that you do it, but I'm giving you some, some reasons why to think about it. Team chemistry is where I want to land here um, on everything. Look at these three pictures. Look at these three teams, Ren Collective, Switchfoot, and Passion. What do you see these guys not doing? They're not slave to a chart. They are not slave to an arrangement. These guys are going off the cuff. They're working together. They got their eyes on each other. And the, and the quote that I'm going to give you here below that I just say all the time is team chemistry starts when you've practiced enough to put away the sheet and look to the team. All right. Team chemistry starts when you have practiced enough to put away the sheet and look to the team. All right. Get that in your head. 
Um, it is, it's a beautiful thing that I was taught early on. You can have things perfectly dialed in. You can, you can please all the type A'ers, which are some of your best musicians, by the way, and singers, because they practice. <laughs> but when it comes to actually being able to develop a team chemistry with each other, you need a shorthand. You need a way to be able to adapt quickly. Number system does that. But the most important thing, I would just give you a free little bonus thing here is aside from number system, don't give your band too many things to work on at the same time. All right. And what I mean by that is if you have planning center or you've got a, a drawer full of songs um, at in a filing cabinet, whatever you use to give your band chord charts, you probably have more than 15, right? You probably have more than maybe 50. Um, you've probably been at a point where you've had maybe more than a hundred <laughs> and that's just something that happens, uh, over time you accumulate more songs. The problem is your band changes and when your band changes, they need time to be able to practice and work on, on this new system, this new team and develop chemistry. They develop chemistry by being able to spend enough time on the same songs long enough to be able to work together. And that's when you start developing things. So locking it in with a shorthand, like the number system, and then finally being able to give them just a few enough songs, maybe have them practice one song for four weeks in a row with the other songs that are changing and get them to the place where they can put away the sheet and look to the team and focus on those things together. So that's when it comes to the, um, Nashville number system. And thank you for going through that with me. Now I want to move on to our next segment here on the show. Next segment here is all about our products of the week. So our products of the week, if I can, I don't think I have a drum roll. No, maybe that'll work. No, it's a good product. It's not a weird product. Samsung T5 portable SSD looks super boring, right? This can transform your workflow. What I found about, about this product, um, I compared it to a few different drives that I have in my computer. I don't know if you guys do anything with recording right now, uh, pre-recording, or if you guys archive anything that COVID's going on and you're just needing to make sure you keep a catalog of all the different recordings you guys have been doing. Um, if you do your own video editing, if you do any audio editing, um, and if you guys do any plugins for like Ableton Live or, or Logic Pro or anything like that, when you have a lot of files and your computer's starting to slow down, this is what you need. And the reason why you need a portable SSD and not just some kind of hard drive to dump it off on is because you can work off of these things. Now, this one I've been trying out, I've been testing it. Um, I had a couple others that that I've been looking at. And the first one that I used when I got here at this church was this uh, this Lacey, this little orange guy. This is a terabyte hard drive, um, portable SSD. And I, I copied and pasted. I, I keep Ableton for all of our tracks that we do at our church on a big, long master template. And it was about 30 gigabytes when I got this thing going. 30 gigabytes. It took me about 30 minutes to upload everything onto here. Uh, which whatever, you know, a gigabyte per minute, <laughs> it seems slow to me. <laughs> Anyways, then I bought this guy, this little sand disc, which is super cool a terabyte here as well. So first of all, let's just give it to the sand disc here. Terabyte versus terabyte. I mean, come on, which do you want to choose? But this thing right here actually copied in and got everything onto there. I was about 60 gigabytes at this point. So it'd been quite a while. I've been adding a lot of files. 60 gigabytes transfer to this in about 15 minutes. So about half the speed, double the data um, transferred onto here. It was awesome. Then I got this guy. And this guy transferred about 65 gigabytes of the same file in about five minutes. It was less than that. But five minutes, we'll say, to be generous with it. Couldn't believe it. Now, what's really handy about this, and even the SanDisk um, right here, both of these, I'll link both of these below. I've got some stuff down there for Amazon that you can check them out at, and we'll take a look at it real quick on Amazon too. But what's really, really cool 
um, about both of these products is that you can, you can actually, they're fast enough to edit on. All right. And they're fast enough to edit. Like, I mean, a lot on like 4k imaging video on. So right here, we've got the, uh, Samsung, um, portable SSD T5. This is the link that I have below for it. Um, if you wanted to check it out for your stuff, for your church and your workflow, it's actually running this really cool deal right now. When I got it, it was 250 bucks. Right now it's 139.99, only in this color though, and only for one terabyte. If I go to two terabytes, it's gonna go up to 362, all right? So this is this is quite the deal. It's, it's dropping 110 bucks right now, and I've never seen that before. And these things are backordered like crazy. So this, this would be a really cool thing. Check out the ratings for that. See if it's something that you guys want to do. But that's that's that guy right there. The SanDisk over here, 159. You actually get <laughs> a much better card for like 20 bucks less uh, when normally it's 110 bucks more than this guy right here. Um, but the SanDisk is also a really great one. Uh, it's super portable, super easy to do. Normally it's less expensive than the T5. But right now the T5 is just killing it. Um, this says it's up to 550 megabytes of transfer speed. Um, that's true, but it's not writing speed. So if I'm actually creating a video, this thing lags a bit more. If I'm transferring and writing onto it from somebody else, it goes a little slower, which is why it took about 15 minutes. This thing says 540 megabytes per second. That's because of the, um, transfer speed. It's that quick, but when you're writing onto it, it's it's the same 540, not 500 like the sand disc. And this guy is just bulldozed past things for me. It's the best I've ever seen. So that is product of this week. I'll try to do, it's kind of a boring review. So maybe I won't do a review on that, but that's the one that I want to give for you this week. Improve your workflow. Uh, just give you a little bit more, um, that you might be able to do in the future with recording, archiving, all that good jazz. So that is our product of the week the T5 Samsung portable SSD, portable solid state drive. And with that, we are pretty much done with today's episode. So I wanna thank you for coming out. Thank you so much for watching this, for supporting the channel. Please share this with other people, help us grow our community. If you could, again, on YouTube, everything's about the likes. If you can give us a like, if this was valuable to you, if, if you had fun with it, if it was valuable, please like this episode. It's really going to help us spread this out for other people. Um, comments, give us some comments, give us some, some wins that you've experienced from this week. Um, give us some questions. If you have it about the T5 or if you have it about Nashville number system, anything else we use at all worship artistry, any of that, I will have all the links for everything below that I've talked about, um, this week. And, <laughs> and don't forget that, that when we, when we share this with other worship leaders, um, what we're trying to do is help grow a community of equipping, training, and uniting each other uh, so that God can get the glory in what we do. So have a blessed Sunday this week and of worship, and I will see you next time.